All right, so welcome back, guys. Let's talk a little bit. I want to show you a couple things because I had a couple students in one of my other classes complain about having to gather reference. So I want to show you a really fast way to throw a reference into a page if you're not familiar with it. And then I also want to show you uh, some silhouettes, and I want to show you a quick way to create silhouettes, and then also want to show you a quick way to modify them where you could literally come up with a whole page of designs very quickly. Okay, so first things, let me come back here and like we were talking about before and when we talked about the process on how we create things, right? So I'm going to open up this little process window that I made here for you guys, right? We always gather reference, we go to silhouettes. The more pages of silhouettes you do, even though it might be boring, the better it is in, in the long outcome. We take the ones we like, we refine them, we start to rough on top of those. Part of this rough phase is also turning them at a three-quarter angle and figuring out what your design look like once it's turned uh, in another dimension, okay? For this assignment, um, you can, we can work in one, perspective, one point perspective still, and I'll give you a little lecture on one point. I haven't talked about it yet. One point is totally fine. Those of you that know a little bit more about perspective, you can go into two point. And I always have one or two students that are like shaking their heads. They're like, yeah, I know two point. I'm a pro at it. And then they put their vanishing points too close together and the subject matter is all distorted, right? So we'll, I'll go over two point when we do another assignment for right now. One point is absolutely fine, okay? So away from the process, first thing, I want to show you, I made these reference pages right here, okay? That was some reference I had online for you. I grabbed some other reference. Um, I wanted to do like an old, I'm Greek, so I wanted to do like an old building that might have like a, like a boat dock exterior, like right along the side. So I was trying to look at reference for both these. These pages took me about a minute and a half to put together. Okay, and this is how you do it. Okay, and I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to create another layer here. And what you do is if you look over on the side here, I have my reference folder right there where I gra grab my reference. Here it is. Okay, so this is really cool thing in Photoshop. You know, you can open and copy and paste and it puts it in as a JPEG. That's really cool. But this is really convenient. Watch. If I select, I'm just going to select these first five images right here. And I'm just going to drag them into the Photoshop window. And what happens is Photoshop comes in and it imports them. But it's bringing them in and not a JPEG format, but a different format. But what's really cool is, look, I can grab it right now and resize it. And I can put that image in the corner where I want really quick. And here's the best part. Once I hit return, Look at what happens. Boom, another image is there. Remember I dragged all five? So it's up there and I don't have to transform or scale or anything. Well, it's, I'm transforming it, but I don't have to go hit all the buttons individually. So boom, I have another. Look at that, the other image popped up there. I grab it, drag it over, bring it down like this. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put this right here. Okay, and get that to fit inside my reference page. Okay, about right there. Okay, there's the other image. Scale that down, move this guy over to here. So how long has it been? Like maybe a minute or so? And I already have the majority of my reference page done. You see this? Now it's just an issue of me moving a couple things in order. Okay, that's it. So all I gotta do to quickly move around, okay, a little cool trick is you have a three button mouse. If you have a Mac at home and you don't have a three button mouse, get rid of that hockey puck and go get a three button mouse for nine bucks because this thing, it's so convenient. If I hit control and right click on an image, it'll bring me right to that layer. So if I right click on this image, touch it, now I can, I can come over here, I could transform and I could adjust that layer if I want. I can move it around very quickly if I want, want it to get it to fit in. So let's say I like this image here. I wanna move this one, oops, keep hitting the wrong button there. Over here, I'm gonna come back, right click on this guy, I'm gonna move this guy back over here. Um, something I do all the time is I trim my reference. I don't need that part of the ground right there. It's not needed, okay? Now you'll notice when I go to delete it, it doesn't delete. The reason why it doesn't delete right now is the image hasn't been converted over to what we call a rasterized file or a JPEG. So it's really easy if I come over here and if you look on the file here, a normal image like this image here, it has an open window. On the right, uh, you'll notice on here, if I click on it, it's, it's a different preview option. It hasn't been turned yet into what we call a rasterizable file. It was just brought in and dumped, and so Photoshop labels it. I don't know what the official terminology is, but it's just a non-rasterized file. All I have to do is click on the layer, right click on it again, hit rasterize layer, and now I could come here and I can delete that part of the photo that I don't want. Because sometimes what happens when you guys are gathering reference and you're bringing stuff in, okay, uh, 
you end up grabbing images uh, that have excessive reference on them or stuff that you don't need, okay? So right there in less than like a minute and a half, I was able to make a reference page super quick, right? Next thing I do is I grab all those images I just brought in and I select them all, I hit Control E. By highlighting them all and hitting the Shift button and the Layer option, hitting Control E, boom. If now not only compressed them all onto one layer, but it's also rasterized them for me. That's another little thing. Anytime you have something that's not rasterized, if you merge them together, it rasterizes it, okay? All right, so that's real quick. That's how we create our a real quick reference page, okay? Our reference is key on in influencing part of our design. So once I start working, I already have my reference pages up here in Photoshop, so I can go back and look at them at any time. And another thing that I like to do is I'm sort of a, I like to write down and I take a little post-it and I write down visual descriptors, okay? Or the visual descriptors are things that I like or notice about a particular building or a piece of reference, okay? For example, if I look at this, I really like how that's sort of falling apart right there, okay? I really like the old uh, uh, roof up there with the shingles on it. I like this foundation on here that's concrete and sort of falling apart. So that stuff I would write down on a little piece of paper. Concrete falling apart, shingle roof, cool chimneys, okay? Again, with the chimneys, look over here. Look at, these are, you know, this is English reference from some English house, English based architecture. Look at the chimneys here, look at the, some of the variations, look at the, the little side uh, dormer, the window dormer that's here. All these little elements I start to, to write down. I even grabbed a couple shipping boats from Greece to take a look at. Okay, this is stuff that influences all part of my sketching. Okay, now I'm going to show you a really quick way. I'm going to come over here. I started goofing around with a couple silhouettes. Let me show you a really fast way to do silhouettes. Some of you are getting in there and you're painting and carving out a black, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But here's a really efficient way. Okay, you see the, these two silhouettes here? I'm gonna show you how I made those. They literally took me about 20 <coughs> seconds. And this is how I did them. I came over and I grabbed the marquee tool here. You have the marquee base tool that's a square and there's also an elliptical version. You can take this and by holding the shift button, I could come in like this, okay? And now I need to hold shift after I drag and drop. If I hold shift once, it just squares the image, right? But I can come in here and you see the little add symbol. I can come in here really quick and you see I can add things like this really fast by dragging little squares. And there's my base structure for what I might consider to be a house, right? So what I'm gonna do really quick, on my version of Photoshop at home, I have a hotkey, which is control F, which fills for me. Okay, here it's Shift-5, but I don't use that. If I hit Fill, I already have black selected, boom. That is the foundation of a silhouette for me to use. Then what I do is I zoom into that, I come over to the lasso tool, I take it off the hard edge lasso, lasso and I go to the free edge lasso, and what I do is I just come in here like this. And I might sketch a roof, maybe there's like a little second floor here, maybe there's a set of stairs that come down like this, Maybe the stairs come up a little bit and there's a little lip, let's say, for our stairs here. They come up to like the front. Okay, I just keep adding on. Maybe there's a little support here. Maybe there's a support there. Maybe there's a little piece of string hanging and there's an old shirt hanging right here. I add something in here like this. I come back to this side and I say, okay, there's gonna be something here. Maybe there's another little side awning that comes down. There's something here. Again, maybe there's some stairs old wooden, so I'm gonna make these like little indications here that come down like stairs into rocks and then try to come straight across like this. There, I just drew on top of that and then I'm gonna go back to fill really quick, edit, fill, okay, foreground, boom, see that? There's a new little building silhouette. It took me a matter of seconds to create it because I use Photoshop and I use Photoshop in a way that benefits me, okay? Now if I want to, it's still a base image. I can come back on here and I can erase. Like I really didn't like this line right here. So I can come back in here and I can erase part of this off. I can draw back on top of that and I could create other little elements, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I notice it's a little wide. So I'm gonna transform it, scale it down a little bit, get it a teeny bit smaller here. But do you see how quickly I created that? And it has a sort of cool feel to it where now I can go in and alter it versus 
and there's nothing wrong with this but a lot of times what I'll notice is students will be sitting in Photoshop and they're gonna sit like this and they got a little wedge brush like so and they're just sitting here going in black going okay here's an edge here there's an edge there here's my house here's you know what I mean and it takes forever to do that right use the tools to your advantage this is the benefit of having a digital class and a digital application to guide you along part of your process okay so now here's the best part right okay that's where I started that's what I ended up with now you have the option in Photoshop to use copy and paste and transformation tools to manipulate silhouettes you've already done and to bring them together to make new silhouettes and I'm going to show you an example of that okay so what I'm going to do really quick here I'm going to get rid of this actually I'm going to keep those because I could use these actually watch this I'm going to put these little two pieces in here I'm going to use these as chimneys and I'll show you how in just a minute so I come back under edit and fill now what I'm showing you here is actually something that I learned working in Maya when I work in Maya and when I model, what I do is I create little parts of elements that all come together that make one model. So I can make one roof, manipulate that roof three different ways in Maya, and then I can use it three different times. But how many times did I have to make it? Once, right? So I can do the same thing in here, that same mentality with my any of my, my shapes in here. So watch, I'm gonna take this guy right here, okay? I'm gonna select him, copy, paste, I'm going to bring them over here. What I'm going to do is hit transform, control T. I'm going to flip them over like this, and I'm going to put them like that. Okay? And now watch. When I just copied that, the memory of the copy is still in Photoshop's front cache memory. So if I hit paste again, see what happens? It's still there. So now I can take this guy, transform. Now watch. I'm going to right click on him. By right clicking with the mouse, I have options besides transform. I have distort, skew, warp, okay, perspective. You have to become familiar with those tools and what they do because they all have a different attribute. What I'm going to do right now is try skew. So I'm going to grab this end of the roof like this, bring it in, and see if I can grab this and slide it over a little bit. And maybe then what I'm going to do is grab this corner, bring it down a little like so. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to distort then I'm going to grab it and bring it down a little like this hit enter and then I'm going to move that over and I'm going to see if I can't find a way to blend that into that silhouette okay you see how I did that pretty quickly I'm going to come over here I want to get a little bit of a rocky edge on there a little bit of a rocky edge coming off here okay and look at how quick I did that I'm going to select those two merge them together I just created a new silhouette based off of my other images and it took me a matter of seconds to do. The next thing I'm going to do, the one thing I don't have on here is any chimneys. So I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to take just that part right there. I'm going to hit copy, paste. Oops, area is empty because it fills on the wrong layer. So now that I'm on the right layer, command copy, paste. I'm going to take that chimney. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to hit transform. I'm going to scale it down a little real quick, put it in there, boom. Now I have a chimney, okay? So do you see how I can use other parts that I've already done and I could quickly come up with new images. So now I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna merge these all together. Now these are all on one page, okay? So let's take this design that I just made. I'm gonna grab the top here, let's grab the little side here. Copy, paste. I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna transform it. I'm gonna flip it horizontal this time. And what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna to go to warp. Warp's really cool because it puts a little box around it and it allows me to do a couple things. I can grab an interior part of the box, see that? And I could quickly warp it and bend the image a little bit, okay? And, and I could sway it or add a little bit of, of uh, detail or information to it. Or I can even grab a corner, see that? And bow a corner down a little bit. Now I've put a little bit of a sway on that building so I could actually design something that's straight up and I could come over into warp and I could start pulling it aside and adding a little bit of gesture to the building making look like maybe it's been hit by the wind or it's on a coast, right? And then I could do the same thing. Let's come back here. I'm going to take part of this. I like that top part of the building here. So now the way that my mind thinks, and a lot of this was because of working in Maya, is I think of things in parts and how I can reuse those parts and put them somewhere else. So now I can come back over here, okay? I'm gonna merge my layers. I'm gonna copy and paste the top of that building. I'm gonna bring it over here. 
and see if I can't find a way to incorporate it somehow into that sketch. And actually, what if I put it about right here? But what I'm going to do is transform it. I'm going to make it a little bit skinnier so it comes up along here. And then all I'm going to do really quick, I have two objects touching each other. So I'm going to grab this silhouette that's right here. I'm going to hit the Move tool, which is, oops, same layer. Hit the Move tool. I'm going to move them over a little bit. And then I can come back to here now. And then I can add a little bit in. But when I do my silhouettes, I prefer to use the Lasso tool and draw a line and fill it because it saves me a ton of time. So now I might come in here and put like a structure. I might pretend there's like a base that comes down to a little hill. Maybe there's something in like this. And then I'm going to come back. So with Shift 5, uh-oh. That's why I got to get my own hotkeys. We'll do that as another demo. I'll show you how to bring your hotkeys from home, add them in, and then you can install them in Photoshop here and use them. So if you don't want to, you just come up here and you go under Edit there and you just go to Fill. Oh, Shift F5. And I always forget on this keyboard how to hit F5. Anyway, so if I hit Fill, Foreground Color, OK. There it is. And now I'm going to come in with my marker. And I might just darken this up a little bit right in here. I might connect this, make it a little bit straight. So it looks like I have sort of like two structures next to each other, let's say. OK. Now, avoid going too crazy with your silhouettes and getting something that's super complicated with really thin lines. Remember, visual reads tend to work best on just really simplistic objects and real basic constructions, okay? And aim for and have fun with something that has character. Nobody wants to see a building that's at 90 degree angle and the roof is completely perfect and everything is completely, you know, meticulous about it. There's a natural character to things that, that come out and come alive, okay? So this shape right here, I did that super quickly. That was just using the lasso tool and excuse me, the marquee tool, and then I drew on top of it with a lasso tool, okay? So in less than like maybe five, what, seven minutes, I've been able to knock out these shapes here, and I could come back to any of them that I'm still working on, and I could just add to them, you know? I, I always like the idea of coming up like rocks or mountains, then going upstairs, and then hitting the entrance to a particular place. So just have fun, hit fill, okay, boom, to select there come back to my markers. So I hope this guides you guys a little bit more on part of your process here of thinking about what buildings or structures might look like, okay? Because um, it, it helps me out quite a bit, okay, to do it like this, all right? So just real quick, it was the marquee tool, which is up here on the top. And if you want to, there's even ellipses in there, but be careful. If you start making buildings that are in that shape, it, it looks futuristic and it no longer looks like uh, the, the particular time period that we're going for, okay? But I've used these sometimes for like, you know, making a round supportive arch or something on the side. It can be, oops, it can be very efficient, okay? All right, so that's it. Uh, any questions on that? Nope, okay, cool. Let me hit save and hit stop.